bestbookbits.com brings to you the summary of How to Break Up with Your Phone by Catherine Price. My name is Christine from Germany and I'm one of the contributors at Best Book Bits and I will be sharing this summary with you today. Enjoy! Do you frequently end up taking up your telephone when you're on the transport, holding up at the specialist's office, or just strolling down the road? This may appear to be sufficiently harmless, yet, truly, all that time spent gazing at a screen isn't sound. It's not simply that always utilizing a cell phone will keep you from monitoring what's going on around you. All the more genuinely, these devices are addictive on the grounds that they are designed for this purpose. Utilizing them for a smidgen is fine, yet giving your telephone use a chance to snowball can end up tricky. This outline will demonstrate to you the essential brain and science behind telephone enslavement. Utilizing this information, you'll figure out how to construct a superior and more advantageous association with your telephone, and with innovation all the more, for the most part. This isn't a tirade, however, a handy guide that will give you some presence of mind tips on how to best say a final farewell to your telephone. In addition, when you've settled on that choice, you'll appear at taking advantage of all that available time you'll end up with. The quantity of individuals dependent on their telephones is rapidly expanding. Simply investigate around you, in cafes, on road corners, on open transport, however you look today, you'll in all probability observe individuals, including kids, stuck to their telephones. What's more, the proof isn't simply recounted. The information is clear. As indicated by a 2016 Deloitte study directed in the United States, the normal American checks his or her phone a normal of multiple times every day. In the 18 to 24 age section, this number shoots up to an astounding 82 times each day. What that implies was cleared up by research distributed in 2015 on HackerNoon.com. Americans spend a normal of four hours every day with their telephones. That is 28 hours out of every week, fundamentally equivalent to having a genuinely bustling no maintenance work. Fortunately, there's a direct test you can take to understand if you're addicted that is known as the smartphone compulsion test. It tends to be discovered on the web and was planned by the University of Connecticut's Dr. David Greenfield. As portion of the key inquiries include do you invest more energy with your telephone than expected? Do you look with no ability to read a compass? Do you end up discussing more with individuals by means of your telephone as opposed to all things considered? Do you keep your telephone exchange on in bed? Do you will, in general, stop what you're doing as such you can react to something on your telephone? On the off chance that you wind up responding with yes to these kinds of questions, at that point chances are you have an addictive association with your telephone. Be that as it may, don't freeze. You are not the only one. We should start by seeing why checking your telephone truly is a type of fixation and what it implies for you. The hormone dopamine can prompt fixation and internet-based life is intended to trigger dopamine discharge. On the off chance that there is one sort of logical examination ever present in the prevalent creative ability, at that point it's the ones where rodents have their conduct controlled somehow or another. Generally, the rodents are given nourishment or electric stuns to support or dishearten certain practices and propensities. Such experiments are performed based on the dopamine hormone in the brain. What's more, you got it, people respond to it too. However, how can it work? All things considered, when dopamine is discharged, it depends to joy receptors in the cerebrum and we experience joy. In the event that a particular movement reliably makes dopamine be discharged in the cerebrum, we begin to associate that action with the dopamine discharge and will participate in it all the more frequently. While humans were hunter-gatherers, dopamine was functional. Eating was like a reward for dopamine release, and dopamine convinced us to hunt several times. The drawback to dopamine, however, is clear. It can likewise produce unwanted addictions and longings. The individuals who realize the science can utilize dopamine for their own motivations. Simply look at how online life is structured. 
Take Ramsey Brown, the organizer of the startup Dopamine Labs, which makes calculations for online life applications. Every calculation is intended to trigger a dopamine discharge in the minds of individual clients. That way, they'll continue utilizing their telephones and keep cooperating with an application being referred to for longer time frames. For instance, a calculation stores likes or messages from different clients, yet it doesn't discharge them to the client progressively. Rather, the calculation observes the client's application communication examples and knows when the client is probably going to move to accomplish something different. At that exact minute, the application discharges its put-away likes and messages. This client criticism results in the arrival of dopamine in the client's mind. This, thus, keeps them in the application condition. The client winds up snared. The human cerebrum is effectively diverted, essentially, and telephones support it. Although distraction is often referred to as a bad thing, it is actually a natural process. Truth be told, distraction was vital to survival in early mankind's history. We must be profoundly receptive to our environment in those days. As a result, we might have to be a trigger and run in case of a hunter hiding in the bushes. Nonetheless, that is not every bit of relevant information. Our tendency to being diverted likewise comes down to neurobiology. First of all, the demonstration of concentrating is diligent work for the mind. There are two purposes to this. Most importantly, the mind needs to choose what to concentrate on. It's a mind-boggling task performed by the prefrontal cortex. Furthermore, the prefrontal cortex will, in general, get exhausted before long. You can consider it an enormous muscle. In the event that it needs to settle on such a large number of back-to-back -back choices, it moves towards becoming overpowered. Diversion before long sets in as we get ourselves uncertain of what to focus on. Second, supported focus requires exertion. The mind must close off all pointless interior and outer data sources. Extra tangible data and diverting manners of thinking must not be permitted to the metal and go after consideration. In spite of the fact that we're not mindful of this happening, it requires our cerebrums a great deal of exertion to continue large amounts of fixation. So shouldn't something be said about telephones? All things considered, for reasons unknown, they are incredible at diverting the cerebrum. How about we contrast them with books to get a thought of why? When you're perusing a book, diversions just originate from the outside world. Maybe there's a thump at the entryway, or you get a telephone call. It's entirely clear for the mind what it ought to give its consideration regarding. In any case, with telephones, it's unique. Advertisements, connections, and pop-ups show up on screen right where we're attempted to focus. Basically, the cerebrum needs to go to significantly more exertion to look after core interests. It gets depleted sooner, and keeping up consideration turns out to be progressively troublesome. The outcome is that it capitulates to diversions all the more rapidly. Instead of doing what we want, we are checking our emails or surfing on the internet unconsciously. There's an exercise we can gain from this. On the off chance that you have content to peruse, you're in an ideal situation perusing a printed version or a promotion-free digital book than endeavoring to do it on your telephone. Telephones upset both momentary memory and long-haul memory. Memory makes us our identity, and that is the reason the beginning of sickness like Alzheimer's among older individuals is so dreaded. Be that as it may, issues with memory influence youthful ages as well. Simply consider how troublesome it tends to be as an understudy to remember statistical data points for the test. Discovering that telephones are a contributing reason for this won't be a shock. Telephones can do genuine harm to your momentary memory. Your transient memory, or working memory, is the piece of your mind that tracks what's happening right now, juggling every one of the bits of data that you have to process. For example, it prevents you from overlooking that you're searching for keys while you're searching for your keys. Be that as it may, transit memory can just monitor a few things at one time. Truth be told, in an investigation from 1956, analyst George A. Mill operator found that we can just hold around seven things at the same time. 
As of late, science creator Nicholas Carr scaled that down to an increasingly reasonable two to four things. Telephones can meddle with your transient memory through steady diversion. Each time you look at your telephone, your momentary memory is kept from holding data about what's happening in reality. All things considered, the working memory can just monitor a couple of things at the same time. Good karma recalling who you've quite recently met at an evening gathering in case you're accepting a surge of warnings by means of web-based social networking. Furthermore, it's not simply your working memory that endures. Telephones likewise harm long-haul memory. Your long-haul memory capacity is to hold data about what happened a week ago, a year ago, or quite a while back. Be that as it may, here's the rub. Information like that begins its voyage in the momentary memory and is then put away in long-haul memory. Likewise, just a portion of the data winds up getting exchanged from one to the next. That is on the grounds that the transfer procedure takes up a tremendous measure of vitality. The outcome is that when the momentary memory gets an excessive amount of diverting contribution from a telephone, the entire procedure separates. Data does not get moved to the long-haul memory. Furthermore, your telephone is at fault. Telephones exasperate rest designs, bringing about less fortunate generally well-being. Social media is one of the extraordinary developments of advanced age. There are numerous reasonable advantages to this reality, yet its consequences for people's passionate states can be colossal. It isn't uncommon to be stuck between inclination, upbeat, restless, intrigued, nauseated, and fallen inside only a couple of minutes via web-based networking media. Obviously, all that disturbance unleashes destruction on rest and unwinding. Most perceptibly, telephones aggravate your capacity to nod off. This is because the way that telephones are intended to be profoundly invigorating and to catch your eye. Attempting to nod off with your telephone adjacent is much similar to endeavoring to rest off on the lounge room couch, with a TV blasting or your companions having a warm political exchange. It's these conditions that you take to bed with you if that's the place your telephone is. Moreover, the blue light radiated by telephone screens can likewise cause issues. This piece of shading range fools your mind into feeling that it's still daytime. So in case you're answering to a late night content, you're going to think that it's harder to nod off. There's a science to rest. At the point when the cerebrum never again distinguishes blue light, it begins creating the rest administrative hormone melatonin. Furthermore, it's melatonin that prepares your body for rest. This implies on the off chance that you take a gander at your telephone past the point of no return at night, getting the chance to rest will turn out to be increasingly troublesome. In any case, that is just the initial step to more unfortunate well-being. Rest interruption as brought about by telephones can prompt interminable weariness. Also, ceaseless weariness thus may result in increasingly serious ailments, for example, cardiovascular malady. As indicated by a 2008 Harvard Medical School contemplate, even low dimensions of lack of sleep may unfavorably influence disposition, basic leadership, and learning capacity. Additionally, as indicated by a similar report, the beginning of manifestations can arrive quickly. Typically, you need 7 to 8 hours of rest at night. Be that as it may, everything necessary is a stretch of 10 days with 6 hours of rest for each night for harm to be finished. Your sharpness will be as poor as though you'd gone 24 hours with no rest by any stretch of the imagination. The exercise is clear. Not exclusively do you not require your telephone in bed. You should attempt to maintain a strategic distance from it in the prior hours hitting the hay too. Saying a final farewell to your telephone requires solid inspiration and familiarity with your telephone conduct. Let's get straight to the point. Choosing you to need to invest somewhat less energy with your telephone isn't tied in with making an ethical judgment. There is no compelling reason to essentially change your look on your telephone. Be that as it may, a preliminary run separation is a decent spot to begin. It will enable you to choose whether your telephone propensities are undesirable and how you can improve your communication with your telephone. There is no compelling reason to freeze. You can take a break from your relationship with your phone and you always have the option to get back to your old habits. 
On the off chance that you do choose to diminish your telephone use, you must be completely clear with yourself concerning what reason you're doing it. At the end of the day, what's your inspiration? It's insufficient simply having a dim thought that less time spent on your telephone would be great. You must be readied. All things considered, you wouldn't leave your accomplice for another person since you have some poorly characterized thought of a superior relationship. No, you must be confident about what is distinctive in this new relationship. Discover your inspiration. Saying a final farewell to your telephone could, for example, offer you the chance to become a familiar with another language or to invest quality energy with friends and family. The other component of saying a final farewell to your telephone includes monitoring your own conduct. Endeavor to work out precisely how much time you spend on your phone consistently. Try not to stress. You don't need to bear a stopwatch. Following applications like Moment or Off Time can record how regularly you take a gander at your telephone and the measure of the time you spend on your telephone every day. The way toward working out your telephone propensities will imply that you'll be in a vastly improved position to set a reasonable target. On the off chance that you know to what extent you're on your phone, at that point you know how much time you'll have the option to spare and what exercises you could utilize that time for. Take a stab at erasing your internet-based life applications. However, recollect that it doesn't mean you're disavowing web-based life. Probably the most addictive components on your telephone are web-based life applications. It's difficult to quit devouring online networking once you've begun like eating fast food. Just erase the application from your phone. In any case, erasing them truly isn't that difficult to do. Absolutely, some messages will spring up to pose in queries and give occasion to feel qualms about your expectations. Maybe it'll caution you that information will be for all time erased. Simply disregard it. In the advanced age, that information can be recuperated. It'll be sitting in the web cloud, prepared to be downloaded to your telephone on the off chance that you at any point return. Are you still uncertain? Simply think about all the genuine encounters you could have, rather than messing around on an application. Possibly center around one that is presented to you on a ton of bliss, similar to an outing in nature or a local gathering. Consider every option. Which sort of encounters do you esteem more? The shadow universe of internet-based life or human association and reality? Asking yourself this and articulating your needs will guarantee that you can erase those applications and proceed onward. In case you're stressed at erasing your web-based social networking applications, maybe too enormous of a stage, there is actually no reason for concern. This choice is inconclusive, and you can generally return following half a month or months. There's nothing halting you. Obviously, recollect that you're not really erasing your records. Every single social medium is as yet open from your PC. The watchword here is availability. You would now be able to begin to connect with online life when you intentionally wish to do as such. What's more, similar exercises we found at about telephone utilization can be connected to your PC propensities. Possibly open your web program when you have something explicit to do. And still, after all that, limit your movement to set a time. Guarantee your post-telephone separation time is spent admirably and deliberately. One of the exemplary side effects of saying a final farewell to your telephone is designated dread of missing out, or FOMO for short. So, as to keep away from FOMO, it's essential to recognize what you're going to fill your time with ahead of time of your separation. Else, when you feel bored, you'll simply go after your telephone again. Start by reviewing what you appreciate when you're disengaged from the world. Make a few records, making an effort not to feel constrained by the ongoing past. Maybe there were exercises you adored doing as a child, or possibly there are things that have constantly captivated you, however, that you never had sufficient energy to seek after. What's more, obviously, there will undoubtedly be individuals that you like to invest more energy with. When you've written down your thoughts, the following stage is to make a progressively solid arrangement. Make a calendar that fits with your everyday practice. Keep in mind that you don't need to do everything on the double. Pacing things out will do some amazing things. 
Envision you've settled on a 14-day separation with your telephone. A portion of the things you could do might incorporate unraveling a crossword perplex, going on a nature journey, taking an illustration class, arranging a table games party, visiting a neighborhood historical center, meeting companions, or exploring different avenues regarding other formula. Yet, one action bests all others, and it's the most fundamental one to human presence. Utilize your recently discovered time to work out. We live in an industrialized, advanced age. That implies that we can finish up inclination very separated and estranged from our bodies. Telephones don't help in the scarcest here. Abuse your telephone and your body will begin to feel like a pointless limb. Obviously, it's additionally far more beneficial to practice than it is to utilize your telephone. There is a wide range of activities that can enable you to investigate and reconnect with your body. They could run from something as straightforward as walk or completing a touch of loosened up yoga directly through the move classes. Exercise with your companions can likewise be fun. And there are even some computer games that require fury exertion. In this way, no more reasons. All things considered, regardless of whether you do return to utilizing your telephone all the more normally, there's each possibility your life will have been improved meanwhile. Who can truly turn their nose up at reconnecting with companions, getting once more into leisure activities, or adapting new abilities? The 30-day separation plan begins with adapting some mechanical hacks and changing your propensities. Until then, we have discussed the problem with using the phone and the benefits of in interrupting this use. However, conceptual thinking will just get you up until now. You need to get out from under propensities, and that challenge ought not to be thought little of. So in this and the following section, we'll take a gander at 30-day plan that will enable you to unplug from your telephone. How about we begin? Over the initial two days, you should utilize an application to follow how regularly you're on your phone. You'll most likely think that it's more frequently than you might suspect. This progression, subsequently, is tied in with expanding your mindfulness. On day three and four, you should give close consideration to your emotions previously, amid and in the wake of utilizing your telephone. You ought to likewise give close consideration to how frequently you interfere with an offered movement to check your telephone. Specifically, think about whether you feel better in the wake of chipping away at an undertaking without interferences. Amid this time, you may see that your mind pines for the dopamine remunerate activated by checking your telephone. Similarly, attempt to recognize the failure of diversion, of understanding that there is just the same old thing new or critical when you take a gander at your telephone. On days 5, 6, and 7, you should abstain from utilizing online networking applications. As we talked about before, put that available time to dynamic use for things you cherish exercise, web recordings, or exertion, anything you like doing. On day eight, debilitate all warnings. Keep in mind that each one of those pings and vibration alarms has been planned as signs to get you back on your telephone. Days eight and nine are additionally an opportunity to prune down your applications. Just keep fundamental ones, for example, applications for banking or maps. Everything else ought to be erased. Internet-based life, gaming, or dating applications are every one of no-go's. Presently, all that opened up mental vitality and time you used to spend on these applications can rather be utilized for profitable assignments. On day 10, set up a charging station that is not in your room. That way, you won't be constrained to utilize your phone before rest and afterward again in the minute you wake up. Set yourself up for quite a long time, 10, 11, and 12, by making some intrigue books, setting up a contemplation corner, or just reasoning of whatever other important activities that doesn't include your telephone. On days 13 and 14, you ought to set up your telephone-free zones around your condo. The feasting table is a decent spot to begin. You can likewise outline out telephone leisure time frames. Do you truly require it after 6 p.m., for example? Doing that will likewise stop you fubbing. That is the telephone scorning that happens when you check a message or a warning, overlooking everybody very you, all things considered. Fantastic, you're partially through the 30-day program. How about we make the last stride in the last section? The second 50% of the 30-day separation plan includes a preliminary detachment and a couple of completing contracts. 
The initial two weeks of the 30-day plan were about the telephone, while weeks three and four are about you. You should attempt to rehearse some fundamental care on days 15 and 16. At whatever point you wind up going after your telephone, instruct yourself to stop, inhale, and simply be, and tune into your health. At that point, ask yourself in the case of taking a gander at your telephone is extremely that significant. This procedure will fortify your social mindfulness and give you a straightforward instrument to stop you superfluously checking your telephone. Try to concentrate studies on the 17th and 18th days. This can be as simple as repeating your plan twice or listening to a piece of music with your full concentration. Working on your ability to focus to reduce the process of distraction by your phone and to develop resistance to this problem. Days 19 and 20, huge ones, are for your first preliminary division. You need two entire days for this, so it might be ideal to do it over an end of the week. It's straightforward. Simply turn off your telephone. That's it. Make sure to keep a notepad close by in the event that you have to write anything down or find anything later. This will enable you to oppose going after your telephone. On days 22 and 23, ponder your two-day preliminary partition. You have the option to perceive and weigh up on what you like about your telephone and, on the other hand, what you like about telephone spare time. On days 24, 25, and 26, tidy up those last parts of, com of computerized life that have been irritating you. For example, if your email inbox is flooding, withdraw from whatever is never again significant. Next, make another organizer for messages that need an answer. That way, starting now and into the foreseeable future, you'll have an unmistakable perception of assignments that really require your consideration. Amid days 27, 28, 29, and 30, continue checking your telephone conduct. Maybe you'll see that you're checking your telephone less oftentimes, and potentially more intentionally as well. In case you're available, presently, the ideal opportunity for a second two-day preliminary partition. Simply make certain that in this last stretch you likewise plan for what's to come. Calendar a customary time every month for monitoring how your new telephone rules are functioning. That way you'll be more averse to fall again into old propensities. How to break up with your phone. The 30-day plan to take back your life by Catherine Price, book review. An increasing number of individuals in the world are getting to be dependent on their telephones, and it's truly a type of dependence. Online networking designers are halfway to fault. They engineer applications around this rule. Fixations, for example, this can be unfavorable to your capacity to focus, memory, and nature of rest. Subsequently, it's well worth saying a final farewell to your telephone, or in any event, diminishing the time you spend on it. You'll at long last possess the energy for genuine encounters and the space to begin on deep-rooted tasks and dreams. Purchase a morning timer. A standout amongst the best markers of telephone compulsion is the need to take your telephone to bed. You believe you're simply utilizing it for the alarm clock. However, as a general rule, you're off utilizing it close to waking. There's a simple route around this. Purchase an antiquated morning timer that does simply ring. You can leave your telephone in another room and guarantee a decent night's rest, just as a solid beginning to the following morning.